So this next tutorial in set 2 uh, will revisit the building pad uh, to uh, establish the footing for our building uh, but also the hard surfaces around it such as the footpath and the roads. Now we already know the process of creating a building pad um, that's in the massing and site tab in the model site panel and there's the building pad tool. Um, let's first hop into our site plan. Now we're going into our site plan because we need the uh, survey drawing as a reference uh, to where the uh, footpath and the curb is actually located. But as we create the building pad, we'll place it on our front street level or whatever level you named your level as. Okay, so let's create our first uh, building pad. Um, now I'm going to use uh, the neighbouring site as um, the location for our first building pad um, and to be able to place the building pad I need to see the site boundary so let's pull up visibility graphics uh, imported uh, categories and I'm just going to turn the site boundary on so here's our site boundary I'm just going to create one single building pad uh, from curb to footpath and right along the edge of that site boundary building pad um, draw tool, I'm going to pick lines because I want the lines off the survey drawing. Click on that. Uh, side of the footpath. Now if you get an error message like that it's just telling you that either the line is not uh, completely vertical which is fine, it's off axis um, or the line is uh, not complete. That's fine, just close it down. And select the edge of the site boundary and the edge of the curb. Here. or you can go on the outside that really doesn't matter now these gaps have to be closed up so there's a gap over here there's a gap here and this line is extending way too uh, far uh, so we need to use the trim and extend tool to trim these cleanly to a corner and that's selecting one line and the other and it'll clean it up now you might want to clean up the other corners too just in case now just remember you cannot create a, a pad of a profile that is has overlapping lines um, or has gaps and Revit will prompt you on um, fixing that uh, before you finish the profile. So let's um, quickly check the um, height of this uh, pad. So if we go over here in the properties palette, um, our level field, we're going to just change that to the front street level. So we're going to have a uh, pad that is level with the front street and digs into the uh, topo surface. Um, and last but not least I'm going to edit the structure of this and make it only 150 high. It really doesn't matter um, if it's just going to be used uh, to excavate into the topo surface but if you're going to use it um, as a floor slab as well so it can actually double as uh, footings um, then the thickness will matter. Now let's finish that pad and quickly hop into the 3D view and there is our first pad. As you can see it digs into the earth towards the back and it's level with the street in the front. Now I'm going to repeat the process for the um, other side so let's go back into the site. I'm going to do this side so building pad, draw, pick lines, pick site boundary, the curb, and the footpath. That's fine. Now I know that I can't select the edge of the topo surface, uh, but also know that the topo surface is directly horizontal from this point. So I'm just going to draw a line, snap to the end of this point, and right over, and then trim it. then finish. Now this is what happens if you try to actually draw a pad that extends beyond the edge of the uh, topo surface. Now if I zoom in very closely you can see that it is extending past that edge of the topo surface. Where is it? Over here. Okay. Um, so what you can do is just bring that in 
slightly. Or you can find the exact point where the topo surface actually meets that point. You can do that by drawing another line. Zoom in very closely and making sure you uh, snap to the end point of that line. Zooming out and pulling over again. Now I don't need this line anymore. And I can trim. Now if you um, can't get the exact point, that really doesn't matter. You can still move it slightly inside the uh, edge of the topo surface and what we'll do a little bit later is we'll, um, we'll trim the topo surface uh, to the edge of that pad. So um, it really doesn't matter what you do at this point as long as you have that pad pretty close to the edge. Now let's finish that. Now what I didn't do was check the level that that was placed on um, and change the thickness. Um, and you can see that if you click that, you can see that it's actually sitting on the bar ground level, which is a little bit higher um, than the street level. So that doesn't matter too much. Uh, one of the good things about Revit is um, it will allow you to go back and edit an element over and over again. So I can select that building pad, go up here and go edit boundary. It will go back into the edit mode for me. Um, at this point I can access all the properties of this pad. So edit type, um, I think this is already 150 which is good. And then finish. Um, let's quickly go into the 3D view and there's my second pad. And as you can see this pad is right on the uh, edge of that surface. Um, but if you don't have it right on the edge of that surface you might have a little bit of earth um, continuing uh, up the natural slope. Now if that's the case you can always split that surface again to the edge of the building pad. Now let's quickly uh, keep going and I'm just going to uh, apply the same process to let's say uh, this edge of the uh, curb. So building pad, uh, draw, oops, pick lines and I'm just going to pick the edge of that, that's fine, edge of that, edge of the footpath, that's fine and I'm just going to draw a line from the end point of that right across and then it's trimming. So let's trim that corner, uh, that corner and you can see the pink line across there. This one, make sure you choose the right end of that line and this one. So there's my building pad, it sits on the same level and it's also 150 thick, that's good. Uh, finish. So that's my footpath. Sorry, that's the uh, curb. Um, let's uh, apply that to the footpath. Now I'm just going to do this one section. Uh, primarily because this section of the footpath will slope up to 6 metres so it will start at 5 and move up to 6 so I'll show you how to do a sloping uh, pad. Uh, let's start with this footpath, um, another building pad, big lines, that's fine, um, this one, this one, um, because I've got a vertical line here already I'm not going to do another one. You don't need to do another one uh, because you'll trim it to the corner anyway. Um, and I'm just going to draw that last line down there. Oops. Um, okay, now trim to, and I'll zoom in so you can see. Trim that one and trim that one down to there and trim that one there. So here's my full path. Um, it sits on front street level as well and I think this is fine for the moment. Finish. Let's go quickly into 3D, have a look. Okay, so there it is. So you can see there's a sieve of earth in between there. Um, we can clean that up later. Um, we can see there's a curb, there's a footpath um, and there are pads. Um, now I'll just quickly show you how to do a sloped footpath so that um, it starts here at a particular height and goes up to a different height up here. So let's go back to the site plan. 
Now I'm just going to start my building pad um, using uh, these boundaries. Like so, and trimming as usual. Okay, so here's my boundary, making sure it's on the right level and same thickness, that's good. Um, now to create a sloped uh, building pad, we need to go into the draw uh, panel and click on the slope arrow. So we're no longer defining a boundary line for our pad, we're defining a slope. Now a slope um, is uh, established uh, through two points, the tail of the slope or the um, height or the highest point of the slope and the end of the slope or the head of the slope which is the lowest point and we should always start with the highest point um, which is up here so this is our highest point and uh, I'm just going to snap to the midpoint of that and my second point will be the head or the lowest point of the slope uh, so the midpoint of that as well um, I want it to go right through the middle um, which is why I've snapped to the midpoint. So there's our slope arrow. Now over here in the properties palette um, we're specifying a height uh, at the tail which is here and the height offset which is our height uh, from the head of the arrow. At, uh, at the moment it's 300, we're going to change that to a thousand or one meter. We know that because that's starting at five meters that's uh, ending at six meters um, so the difference is one meter. So the height offset would be a one meter at the tail. So let's finish that. And here's our slope. So let's hop over to the 3D view quickly. There's our 3D view and there's our slope starting at the same street level here and ending up a little bit higher there. Now there is a gap between there um, primarily because this is at a lower um, height um, and it's excavating into the top of surface um, and that's a little bit higher. Now what would usually happen there is um, you'd probably have a building um, and a wall, an uh, external wall that covers that or if you don't have a building you'd most likely have a retaining wall so keep that in mind because you may come across that uh, in your own design. Um, so you may need to uh, consider putting a retaining wall. Now I'm just going to um, hop into the side again and grab that section line and make it cut straight through the footpath um, like so. And then hop into the section so I can see that it has been placed correctly. So here's our section and we can see that the start of it is at the front street level which is correct and it goes right up to the um, the end street level there, the um, top street level. Okay, so that's great. Um, let's go back into the site plan. Now, um, you'd be expected to actually apply the same process to um, all the other hard surfaces. I'll quickly go through this uh, street and show you how to uh, lower a uh, particular uh, building element um, just underneath the level that it's been drawn on um, and then you can go on and finish it off for me. Um, so let's quickly do uh, this last building pad. Don't forget to save your project. Um, this time I'm picking lines, picking the edge of that, that's fine. Don't need to pick that because this will extend anyway picking that. Now I have to draw two lines from this end point to... Now I'll just draw any random line and show you how to split the surface a little bit later. So I might want to draw, let's say, from here across. Hopefully it doesn't extend past the pad, which might be a problem. Okay. So here's uh, my shape, I just need to trim it off. Like so. Um, now this is the street level. Um, I will put it on the front street level but I will offset it uh, below 
uh, the curb just slightly so that it sits um, underneath it. Um, and I can do that by going into the height offset and specifying a minus value. So let's say I want this to drop uh, 150 millimeters below my curb. So it's minus 150. Uh, making sure that it's also 150 really doesn't matter at the moment you can change it but I'm going to leave it 150 and then uh, finish it okay so let's go into the 3d view for a second now you can see that the street is actually now just below the um, the curb even though it is on the same level, it's on the front street level, it has been offset uh, just under 150. And that's how um, you can uh, create things on the same level um, but manipulate its height slightly. Now I'm going to leave uh, that for you to finish. I'm just going to move very quickly onto footings um, for our building model. Now this will form the foundation uh, for our building design. Um, so let's hop into um, the site plan very quickly. Now remember that uh, we now uh, are building on that bar ground floor, whatever ground floor that you specified earlier, um, and not the street level. Um, so keep that in mind as we're building uh, the pads. Now. Uh, depending on your design, um, your building pad might be um, right on the street front um, in the front of the site. You might have uh, a separate one for the units or you might have a single one for all of them. Um, so I'm just going to do an example but keep in mind that you would need to um, apply this for uh, your own design. Um, okay, let's do a building pad. Um, I'm going to pick lines because I want it straight off the uh, footpath and then I will draw uh, the outline of where my building pad will be. I'm just going to do a small one as an example and it could be any shape. Um, actually I might draw uh, another shape up here and trim that so you can see how that works. Okay, so here's my uh, building pad, making sure that it's on the right level, yes, and it's remembered my height offset from the street, so keep uh, aware of that, uh, make sure it's reset back to zero, um, and in the edit type, make sure it's 150. Press OK. Now, um, there are two ways we can approach footings. Um, we can create a footing using a building pad, so that building pad could be uh, representing, uh, say, a concrete slab. Um, or we can just use the building pad to excavate into our uh, topo surface to level out the land um, and use uh, the floor tool the, um, to create our floor slab, um, which is um, what's in the next tutorial. So uh, in this tutorial, before we end, um, I'll just show you how you can um, customize the building pad to represent a concrete slab. Um, in the next tutorial, um, I'll show you how to use the floor tool uh, to create the same uh, concrete slab. Okay, so um, using the uh, building pad, it's uh, pretty simple. Um, we've got the level, we've got the height, we need to edit the structure so that it represents something along the lines of a concrete slab. And we can do that in the structure field in the edit button. Um, now the first thing we need to do is make this concrete slab um, a reasonable thickness, so you might want to make it 300 um, depending on your design of course um, and right next to it is a material field um, by default it says by category um, if you click in that you should see a grey button click on the grey button and you'll see a materials uh, box come up a little bit uh, like the topo surface that we changed um, earlier on uh, to earth so same dialog box um, now scroll down until you see concrete uh, cast in situ, that's the one we're going to use. Notice the cut pattern that comes up, but that will be the cut pattern that we'll see in section. And then press OK. OK. So what we've done is we've made a thickness that represents a concrete slab, and we've chosen a material that represents a concrete slab. Press OK. Uh, and finish. 
Um, and that's basically it. If we go into the section, um, let's pull the section line down first. If I can select it, so let's zoom in. Oops. Zoom in and grab it so it runs straight through the site. Um, and let's go to the section. Okay, so there you can see our concrete slab um, and it's sitting on the ground uh, floor. Now if I go down here and change the detail level to 5, uh, you'll see the material as well. Okay, so there's um, our material of the concrete slab. Okay, why has it actually uh, changed the material of our footpath and our street as well? Now I don't recall um, actually going into the materials of that uh, the footpath and changing it to concrete. Now there's a very good reason for that um, and if you click on the uh, concrete um, slab again um, it will tell you that it's uh, a particular type and the type is called uh, pad 1. Now when we edit that type we change the properties of that particular type. Um, now if we go into the footpath we can see that it's uh, identical type, so it's exactly the same type. Now we want it to be a building pad, but we don't want it to be uh, the identical uh, type of building pad as our um, concrete slab. It's a footpath and we might want to put a different material on it or make it uh, a little bit thinner. Um, so how do we actually resolve that? Um, it's relatively easy. All you need to do is, uh, let's say, select the um, concrete slab um, and go into the edit type box again. Now we want to create another instance of this type and we can do that by pressing the duplicate button and let's call this um, ground floor concrete slab. OK. So what we've done is we've duplicated the pad once uh, type, uh, we've named it our own um, and we've kept the same properties. Press OK. So now it's actually a different type even though it's taken on the same properties. Now we click on that one. This one's still saying pad one. So if I were to change the type properties of pad one, let's say, uh, let's make this uh, something else, maybe lightweight. It really doesn't matter. And I'm going to make it um, a little bit thinner. OK. Press apply OK. You can see that this changed, but that stayed the same. OK. And so that's how you can actually um, separate uh, two uh, different building pads, uh, making one, one type and one a different type. Now I'll explain the uh, concept of types and instances in the next tutorial when we're going through floor types. That's just a small precursor. Now I'm just going to quickly change the street, edit, duplicate it and I'm just going to call this street, um, edit, I'm going to change the material again. Uh, this time I'm going to scroll down until I find site tarmac, press OK. Um, and it could be 200 thick. So now different material, different thickness, different type. Okay, that ends this tutorial. Now before you move on to the next tutorial, um, make sure that you have um, all the streets, um, all the footpaths and curbs um, built um, as building pads. Um, you might want to have all the building pads of your design uh, placed within the site as well. Um, and then um, we'll introduce you to uh, floor types, floor slabs um, and floor edges in the next tutorial.